As you may recall, the Supreme Court of Canada said the prostitution laws in Canada seem in conflict with one another. They don't make sense. They struck them down. That did not, as some people thought, I think, in the first hours after the Supreme Court decision, legalize prostitution in Canada until December 16th, I think is the date. The Harper government has the opportunity to reform Canada's laws and see whether or not they will pass muster. They have gotten a nice early start on it as they're beginning to signal that the Nordic model is what they would prefer. Megan Murphy joins me now from British Columbia. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. How would you explain to viewers the Nordic model? Uh, well, simply the Nordic model criminalizes pimps and johns and decriminalizes prostituted people. Um, it also includes services to help women who want to exit prostitution, um, help finding employment, uh, help finding housing, therapy, things like that that are you know, absolutely necessary for these women who've been through a lot of trauma. Do you think the Nordic model makes sense? I think it's the only model that makes sense. It's the only model that takes the perspective that this is an issue of gender inequality, of uh, class inequality, of race inequality, and that is comprehensive as opposed to, you know, just, just, it's not just a law, it's about more than that. It's about changing people's minds, changing the discourse, and helping people who are marginalized. Well, um, it's interesting that reading some of your writing, you say that while there are people who think legalizing prostitution empowers women, that actually the Nordic model would be a more feminist choice to make. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, the Nordic model is more empowering for women than a legalized model because it's the John, the buyer that's doing something wrong, whereas the woman, because she's not criminalized, isn't doing anything wrong. So she has all the power in the situation. The man knows he's doing something all wrong already. If he does something else, if he tries not to pay, if he behaves violently, she can call the cops, the cops will help her. He's already in a position of disempowerment, which sort of switches a situation that's already very um, you know, unequal to begin with. Well, and it makes sense, I think, to you and me, because we have bought into the idea, it sounds like you and I agree, that prostitution doesn't really exist without coercion and distress on the part of the prostitute. Of course, to people who feel that women have a right to sell their body as much as they have a right to sell their time in an office, this doesn't make sense. Well, I don't think that it's necessarily about whether or not women have the right to sell their body because while, of course, some women do choose prostitution, I mean, we can't deny that that's true, but for the most part, in the vast majority of cases, women are either coerced, either they're being trafficked and they literally have no choice, or they've made this choice under duress. So they've made this choice because they're out of other options, because they can't afford to pay their rent and take care of their children, because they need to survive what have you, and again, most of these women are coming from a place of severe marginalization. You know, indigenous women are overrepresented in prostitution, particularly in street prostitution, on the downtown east side, for example. So we, it's not really fair to talk about this as a choice because we're not starting on level ground. Megan Murphy will stay with me, and Paige McPherson will join us coming up next. I mean, it's, it's happening already, so if it's regulated, and people are safe, all the better. I think it's bad for everybody, but especially the prostitutes. I mean, even though they, they are trying to make a living, I mean, like, it's just not, it's not a way to treat yourself. I don't support it, but I think it should be legal. Why is that? You know, it's because it, it's happening, and, uh, you know, I feel like if it's happening, and uh, I, I don't know what their stories are, the people that do it, but I'm sure a lot of them have a real bad story, and they feel like it's their only way to survive. Yeah. So I don't support it, but I feel like it should be legal for that reason. Those are people Paige McPherson talked to on the streets of Toronto on the issue we're discussing here. It is the Nordic model of handling prostitution. It's a kind of uh, counterintuitive thing for some people if they haven't spent time thinking about it, I believe. It comes from the perspective that prostitutes, in fact, are not there totally of their own free will, coercion and distress. I've been speaking to Megan Murphy, who I think has written well on this. She's in Vancouver. She and I are essentially in agreement that this model will work. Paige, you're not. 
No, I'm not convinced uh, about the Nordic model uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, mainly because I don't think it makes sense to criminalize one aspect of an industry and, uh, and then legalize another aspect of an industry when what you're trying to accomplish is to take this uh, industry out of the criminal aspects that have really brought it down and caused a lot of uh, safety issues, caused a lot of distress, obviously, for the women and men that are involved uh, as prostitutes. Uh, we know that when organized crime gets involved in an industry, uh, it's, it becomes extremely seedy. It becomes a situation where people don't want to uh, report violence. Uh, on, and on either side, I mean, prostitutions can report violence, but Johns, men can report violence that they see that uh, pimps are, are doing as well. This, I think, would cause an issue uh, in that way as well. And uh, I haven't really seen the effectiveness of the Nordic model as compared to, uh, to other models such as decriminalization and legalization. Well, Megan, in some writing that you did, I was reading and I thought it was well researched because it tied into much of the other reading that I have done, that actually uh, you can understand why people would think legalizing would make it safer and it would take a lot of the criminal activity out. But in countries that have legalized prostitution, I think that their experience has been it has not worked as well as this somewhat counterintuitive Nordic, Nordic model. Yeah, under legalized models, you know, some of the concerns that Paige brings up are, are totally reasonable, but the fact is that legalization hasn't changed that. So in places that have legalized, um, organized crime takes over, trafficking increases, there's still a really strong underground industry, and the, you know, there's no such thing as a safe legal industry. What we hoped or thought would happen or what you know advocates of legalization hoped or thought would happen would be that it would become safe it would become out in the open it would be regulated but most women under legalized models who are prostituted still don't register to pay taxes a lot of them are illegal immigrants um, and the reason that women don't register to pay taxes and register as prostitutes is because they want to leave the industry and they don't want to be on record as prostitutes. Violence does not decrease under legalized models. Murders still happen. Murders still happen in the shop windows in, Amster in Amsterdam in the red light districts, whereas in Sweden there haven't been any murders of prostitutes since they've enacted the law, and violence has decreased and prostitution has decreased. So, you know, I don't think there's any model that's perfect, but as far as that goes, you know, what we want is to end violence against women to keep women safe and to offer them other options and to change something that's an industry that's absolutely based on inequality, racial inequality, class inequality, gender inequality. You know, most women do not want to do this work. They just don't want to. Yeah, and I, I think that's a really unfortunate circumstance when, you know, women are brought into this, uh, not onto their own free will, uh, but because of being forced. However, like, I will make the point that there, you still, pro child prostitution would still be illegal. Human trafficking would still be illegal. Murder and violence, these are things that would still be illegal if you were to legalize the purchasing and buying, or rather, uh, purchasing and selling of sex. Uh, these are all things that, you know, would still be against the law and still could very well be cracked down on by the police. In addition, uh, these are, you know, we could, we could still set up the same kind of programs, the same kind of exit strategies that I think uh, can have a lot of merit that you're talking about uh, when it comes to helping women leave and exit the industry. I, when it comes to the effectiveness rates of the Nordic model, I mean, a, a lot of the, the numbers that I've seen that have come out of Sweden are based on government numbers, which I am a little bit skeptical of. The, the government in Sweden has, has been very involved in promoting their, their Nordic model approach when it comes to prostitution, very involved in exporting that idea abroad. And, uh, and there are contrary accounts that I've seen from the National Police Board, the National Council of Crime Prevention, and other reports uh, that really say that there's no evidence that, uh, that prostitution has been re reduced, but there's actually lots of evidence under the Nordic model that prostitution has, in fact, become more hidden and there's a, there's a more uh, a legal undercurrent that still exists uh, under that model. Okay, Megan, we've got about 30 seconds. I'll give you a last word here. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the evidence shows that the Nordic model does decrease violence. It does decrease the number of street prostitutes. 
It increases gender equality. The population is in support of it. It's worked since 1999. The research is based on, it's 30 years of research. They did 30 years of research talking to prostituted people in Sweden in order to come up with this model. This what didn't just come out of the blue. This isn't just theory. This is about the reality of prostitution, which is in large part awful and horrible and not something that I believe as a society we should be normalizing. Men do not have the right to buy women, period. Megan and Paige, thank you both. Thank you.